Welcome back to Rock Guitar Confidential with Scott and Ryan. So we're all fans of someone or something, but are you sitting in your darkened bedroom thinking about how you'll impress Jodie Foster? If that's the case, then you need to listen to our podcast now. Stay tuned. I think that uh, once you reach that 1% line, if you're above the 1% line, then the rules of normal human life just go out the window. You can just, you know, whatever right. you want becomes a possibility. You know what I mean? It's like. Well, you know, Matt Damon showed us in Elysium. Oh, yes. The well, that's where the inevitable Neil place. Camp film. That's the inevitable place that it's going. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll all just be on Earth living in shanty towns. Yes. While the Fighting rich. for the scant resources that are available, you know. Right. While Jodie Foster leads the, gov- the world government from a space station. Yeah, exactly. Perfect space station where everyone stays the same age, never has sickness <laughs> and stuff, you know. Right. That kind of thing. And then perfect space station where no one ever has to hear nirvana again oh that'd be great oh, yeah if, for no other reason for just that even if they kept like the sickness thing it's like <laughs> just never have to hear nirvana ever again you know what i mean it's fear we would get that out of the way early for, the, which, but for those who are playing the drinking game <laughs> like take a shot every time yeah. scott and ryan got, rip on nirvana. got more for you too i was i was listening to a classic rock radio station the other day <laughs> and they had like three tunes in a row they were great they played, like an aussie song and then they nice. played like a 38 special song and then they played like a, a scorpion song nice and i was like oh this is pretty good and then, on, then the next one in bloom by nirvana oh so they just like punched you in the dick and i'm like going do people not realize the difference in quality between what we just heard and this? You know what I mean? Well, it's like yeah. we're just listening to no one like you, and now we're listening to In Bloom. Like, it, what's happening? It's like having you to re- it's like having to relive our youth, just like all in like a half hour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Span. Yeah. Oh my God, things are. Oh no! <laughs> what happened? No, God no, 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 no! Can you know, I slip like, through psychology yeah. class again? Oh wait, no. Now it's this. Oh fuck. yeah. You know, and, and then no, but then the next block they went back to some, like you know old Metallica and then some Guns N' Roses, so it was fine. But it's like okay, it, so I, it got better. Yeah. But it's like that kind of thing. It's like that landmine is waiting at some point. You know, there's a Pearl Jam song. Oh, no. It's <laughs> better, man, my Pearl Jam. No, 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 no. Dude, there's, you know. And coming after that will be like, I don't know, like freaking, uh, let's say like a uh, Bark of the Moon. <laughs> like, in, ah. in honor of spooky season, yeah. you know, like Vetter lurks. That would be like yeah, a good exactly. horror movie name. Yeah, that would be like yeah. instead of smile, then all of a sudden he's like, hur, hur, hur. He's like, did you hear that? I did you go. You know, like trying to get some checks for like, cash or something like that. So bad. Yeah, that, that would be that. That'd be a horror movie i would really never sleep after seeing that you yeah no anyone doubt. could be better you know what i mean it's <laughs> <laughs> no it's like a parasite well i mean that, that's kind of reality because like anybody could be better <laughs> i mean right like anybody could do vocals on a pearl jam hey, album like hey, literally anybody he looks sad and earnest in the 90s dude come on that, that's <laughs> well, a skill you can just like, hold, also you can just hold an onion in front of someone's face during the tracking right um uh, that's true i guess that's true I don't know. I accept your premise that anyone could be could be better. Maybe that's a way to destroy AI. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, no. You could, no, check it out. You okay. could you could enter in the prompt. Uh, you know. Please create a Pearl Jam song that doesn't suck. <laughs> and then next thing you know, Boom, the machine is exploded. Yeah, like somewhere like a yeah. server form like goes up in a mushroom cloud. <laughs> There's just not enough. There's just not enough power to get through this. It's asking the impossible. You know what I mean? It's it's totally Does true. not compute. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. It's, it's just, I remember thinking, like, then people don't know the difference. I mean, did they really? And this is totally, you're exactly right. Brings back to high school. Like, do you not see the difference between this and that? Do you think this and that are the same? You know, they, yeah, well, like, I mean, just DJ Bot is just going through whatever the preordained song selection is. The clue, no, there was the an, actual, channel there DJ was an Bot. actual DJ person there saying that, you know, like, next up, Nirvana. I'm like, well, what? Well, yeah, Why but, would you do that? <laughs> you're old enough, Monica Lowe, to know, like, what's good and what isn't. You've been around since the 80s. You and know, you, it's, you know. And you know what? Eventually, that's not even going to be a person it's just going to be an ai, an AI voice assistant saying yeah. funny witty things like hey you guys ready for pumpkin season and to be fair yeah. would it and to be fair would it really be any different these days <laughs> it wouldn't be at all because clear channel owns everything yeah so the there's the preordained here are the songs that you are allowed to play there's no joke too is if you like go away and come back you'll notice the same eight songs on, on constant replay and this is just a sad state of where you know radio is and it's really on my it's my fault for listening to the radio i should have known better yeah yeah what that's, were you doing that I, for I, well, I, well this is 
it this way. Like my favorite sports team didn't do so hot this last week. So I was trying to avoid sports talk radio. Dude, the, okay, so the, look, it doesn't matter that the Kings lost their first five No, that's not, not the team I'm talking about. The oh. Kings are going to be fine. We're going to be in the... Wait, are you talking about basketball? No, let's not or? talk about any other sports. Let's just let it lie. Well, I mean, there aren't any other sports yeah, besides is. maybe boxing. Yeah, you must are. be talking about one there of the... There are two other sports that count besides basketball. You, you must be talking mm-hmm. about one of what I call the lesser sports. <laughs> hey, I think we're going to be fine as the Kings. I, I'm totally confident we're going to get like a top, you know, seven, eight seed-ish. We're gonna be, we'll probably, it needs know, to be top six or better. Eh, I don't know if we're going to do that. But I think we'll definitely make the play in. We'll, I mean, we'll, and hopefully we'll get someone like the Lakers. Well, the they, they need to make the playoffs or else there's going to be irrational wholesale changes. Yeah, I guess that's true. That's true. We got enough horses to do it. So it just, Well, mark yeah. my words. If if they don't make the playoffs, then De'Aaron Fox is going somewhere else. I think that's true. He he just uh, rejected the uh, extension that they offered. So Which I mean, is, yeah. I mean, he would do that no matter what the Kings were doing because that makes him eligible for a Supermax contract. Yeah. Which yeah. Like, I think the... The, the con- Kings are going to give him the Supermax. They're not going to not give him the Supermax. <clears throat> yeah, it's like the difference between like $150 million a year and like $325 million a year or something yeah. like that. Wouldn't Close. be a year. There's no way it'd be a year. But it, like that, or I'm over, sorry, yeah. co- the, the the total contract. Because so I've been working on my jump shot. Just let money be yeah. know. <laughs> okay, so I think it's like if they're giving away those 325 million a year contracts. You know, I, I mean, could be wrong, but let's know. just say four years. Okay, yeah. Now yeah, he's probably gonna be like so what 60 yeah. million a year or something like that or something in that range. Yeah. yeah, math and stuff. So, yeah, anyway, yeah. so like uh, it would be the difference between him earning an additional 150, 175 million yeah. dollars in his lifetime. Yeah, exactly. versus not earning it. But um, so so speaking of of um. By the way, well, to, to answer your question, I was trying yes. my best to avoid sports talk. That's why. <laughs> so like, oh, see, I already forgot about all the lesser sports. <laughs> it's like basketball, and you know what? I got to check well, in as on a musician, what's going on with when you, when, you listen, when you play music all day long for a living all day, you know, the last thing you typically want to do in the car is listen to music because you've been doing music all day. Yeah, so I wonder if people get that. So you like go mm-hmm. close to something that's not music, and then when it's something that brings you pain, you try and avoid it in ways, you, in ways that lead you down paths <clears> you wouldn't expect. Dude, and you know what? That, that's why I... That's one of the reasons I don't like summer. <laughs> Was that one of them? Okay. Yeah, well, because, again, I, I, di- I dig basketball. I like boxing, although I haven't been following boxing as closely. I, you know, the, the whole Mike Tyson, Jake Paul thing's been sucking up a lot of air, so it takes a little more effort to follow what's happening in yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the, the heavyweight divisions and uh, otherwise. But, yeah. um, you know, and it sucks that HBO's not doing boxing anymore. Either. Yeah, it's become a very niche thing. Uf- well, UFC is yeah. actually much bigger, unfortunately. Which sucks yeah, because yeah. UFC doesn't have the same like history and romance yeah. and you know. Yeah, they, they don't even call you after you know. I mean, my God, uh, UFC right? They don't, like, even, they don't even know you, dude. Just what the kiss hell? you in the morning and walk away. <laughs> yeah. So uh, doesn't have the romance like boxing. <laughs> It, well, you know, so like UFC is like being a Pantera. It's like Pantera of sports. Well, Pantera is fine. There's nothing on Pantera. Right. And yeah. so is mixed martial arts. It's yeah. just the fans are fucking morons. Yeah, I get you. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I see what you mean. <laughs> I see where you're going with that. Speaking you know, of that, today's topic. Yeah. Oh, that was, oh, that's not for you guys. You guys are awesome. They're that's not a saying great, you're morons. That's a great lead in. But Pantera yeah. was great. Yeah. Well, well, the greatest, and, and the greatest you know metal band in the 90s. I'll give you that. Yeah. So, and, and today's topic um, actually kind of stems from a conversation. I, I've mentioned this on the program, but uh, a buddy of mine that used to work at Skips, you know, we would talk, and he's, you know, involved in the metal industry, okay. right? We used to talk all the time. Mostly in aluminum and siding, right? That's the... <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's yes. The, he's he, the uh, he QC manager at the plant that, that makes... He, he actually works as a miner. <laughs> he's, he's, at, he's in a zinc oxide mine right oh, now. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. He's in a zinc mine in South America right now. Yeah. Yes, he must watch out for the dihydrogen monoxide. Yeah, I'll tell you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> he provide he provides ore for the Floyd Rose special. Ah, oh, God bless that. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. helping helping entry level players get into the Floyd Rose. Yes, so that's which is unfortunate because we wish have a better work. better Floyd Rose to start with. But anyway. But it's better than uh, you know. Remember when yes. we had all the licensed trims that were they they had fine tuners on them, but the bridges didn't lock, so yeah. it was all just a sham. I once cursed that I only had a Floyd Rose special until I played a fulcrum tremolo. Yes, I know, right. <laughs> it's like oh, okay, then maybe this isn't so bad, you know. Or like the old Ibanez um, Pro. Dude, the Low Pro Edge is one of the best like commercial. No, not the Low made. Pro Edge. I'm talking yeah. about the one like before they built the the predecessor to the you Edge. You probably know more about this. Like, why did the Edge and Low Pro Edge go away? Like, why did they stop um, making that? Is it just okay. they couldn't make anything awesome. They said we have to make it worse. So let's make it worse. Is that- well, the low. Well, okay. So there was. So I've I've got a 2008 RG that has like a Pro Edge. There was some sort of there was something that they used in the design. 
Like, like it doesn't have the saddle blocks that can fall out. They're like permanent sliding blocks mm-hmm. in the saddle. I think that infringed on someone else's patent. And Is that so they, why? Yeah, there was like a there was some sort of patent or that, and then it's also got like a like a receptacle for the ball and there's a receptacle. <laughs> So there's a receptacle for your strings balls <laughs> and the bridge so you don't have to so you don't have to cut the balls off. <laughs> and I think it's that's the truth. <laughs> right? So you, you need yeah. to understand this when you're buying a nut sauce to, <laughs> yeah, to, right. to, yeah, to properly so. lubricate it. <laughs> <laughs> this is all real by so, the way. <laughs> yeah, so, so there's like a there's like a little red receptacle where you place the balls. <laughs> In the bridge, but it was pretty and I think that, <laughs> and I think, <laughs> and I think that that uh, violated someone's <laughs> someone's patent. <laughs> yeah, so that's what's going on with those. Now you can still get. So you a, say the ball receptacle violated? Some- <laughs> yes, it violated someone's patent. It it did not. They they basically they okay. So Ivan has. Ibanez didn't ask for consent <laughs> before <laughs> before deploying their ball receptacle <laughs> in the market. So uh, you know that's what happened. That's why the, that's that's why you can't get that bridge anymore, Scott. Well, that's why the low pro edge went away. Okay. <laughs> yes. Know. It's a long story. Okay, but there's still <laughs> there still is a low pro edge, <laughs> right? Where the fine tuners are moved out of the way. It's just like you still have to cut the strings balls off <laughs> okay fair enough as god intended <laughs> and and yeah. i mean this is all 100 percent accurate what i'm saying <laughs> exactly right <laughs> so you know if 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 our listeners out there are inferring anything otherwise <laughs> then that's on you you know what's funny when you cut the balls <laughs> off you put it in either end <laughs> yes that, that's correct yes you can stick it in either direction <laughs> Yeah, so. <laughs> well, things have gone off the rails here already today, folks. I hope you're having a good time. I'm so glad I'm a mature yeah. man. No, that's <laughs> good. So, uh, hey, you asked, I answered. I know. So, okay, so, they, so that's why we can't get the low pro edge anymore. <laughs> so, yes. So, yeah. my, so my buddy who works in the metal industry, <laughs> okay. we used to often talk about how the people who make the metal are not like the people who consume the metal not always sometimes not they always are, sometimes they aren't you know what i mean it's yeah. and i think pantera is a good example of that right yeah, yeah. you know like the abbott brothers seem like awesome guys i think phil anselmo is kind of a douche yeah seems and like you know it strikes me as a guy who um had a rough upbringing sort of and mm-hmm. never really overcame it if that makes sense he kind of stayed in that that zone when he was like you know when he was like 17 18 that kind of rough upbringing he kind of never got beyond that yeah i mean i know? think he kind of exists in sort of a state of arrested emotional development yep, exactly yeah. and like never kind of overcame and like fully got past with his childhood he kind of stayed there you know what i mean and which a lot of people do it's just it's, you know with therapy you can figure out things and get through it but understood yeah but, um and then rex brown just seems like he's like a typical bass player just Oh, cool! I'm in the band. Kind of along for the ride. Yeah, right? exactly. And you know, like, so like the tradition of all bass players. Just oh, cool! I can play in the band. Okay, then cool. I'm here. You know? Right. So yeah. you know, Pantera's fan base, not all of them, but a large cohort, are just kind of that knucklehead hyper testosterone. Yeah. I mean, that was also going fuck on. Fuck yeah! Fuck yeah! Yeah, well, fucking yeah, right. Yeah, the bro, yeah. like bro metal yeah. guys, and that was also happening in like the late '90s. You know, yeah, all the list of garbage. God smack yeah. And, uh, yeah. Now go away. Uh, exactly. right? Don't feel that. Yeah. And, then, and then a lot of that evolved, well, devolved into, like, new country. I think there's a connection. But that's for another podcast. Well, that, then they call it bro country, that style, right. that, that particular wing of that. You know yep. what I mean? Yeah, it's, that, that, which is unfortunate. You know, though, yes. honestly, that so, is that is a part of, you know, our American tapestry is that, that cohort of people. And they yeah. have to have a music to drag their knuckles, too. So. Well, and then to the yeah. point where, you know, some dude went and shot Dimebag to death with a shotgun, right? Well, that was someone who's probably seriously mental illness going on there. Well, I mean, and, yes, know. there is mental illness yeah. but the fact of the matter is that you know he was also you know like that stereotypical pantera fan yeah who also had mental illness yeah. i mean n- nothing is ever just one thing yeah right but if you like mix enough of the bad things yeah. then mm-hmm. you know you get that out sort of pops out yeah well that brings me to the the, the concept of modern times and, and you know relationship between fans and artists and artists and fans so this is today's that, topic that, exactly so the, hey guys welcome to the rock guitar confidential podcast with Ryan and Scott. Today's topic is the relationship between artists and fans and how it is now versus how it was and the, the pros and cons dangers of, of the way it is and way we, maybe we, Ryan and I think it should be. 
Um, it feels to me like nowadays it, it's expected of the artist to have like an unprecedented open door to their life, to their fan base. There should be like no barriers of any kind in the in mind of most audience members. It should just be, you know, you upload everything to TikTok and Instagram and Facebook. Everything you do is, is open book. Um, and I don't, I don't know. What, what are your feelings on that? Is that an accurate description? Am I missing? Yeah, something? I mean, I think so. So, you know, apart from the example I just gave with Pantera, very, very like extreme example too, especially with having with dime. So, I mean, right. Well, yeah. and I think you can draw maybe not a straight line, but you can draw a line that's straighter than we wished it were from that to the death of dime yeah yeah you know, that, i mean clearly that's an ex well i mean that is definitely an example of toxic fandom because yeah. the dude claims that he was pissed that uh pantera broke up so i think the best yeah i mean obviously there's some huge logical fallacies in what he did about it but, uh, well yeah i mean yeah. it's all i mean yes there's me so yeah so you know let's put a pin in the mental illness thing because that's I think that's. Compelling. I think it's something you and I aren't, aren't terribly qualified to talk about in depth either. You know, it's one of those. It's just. Ah, uh, but we can speculate. <laughs> this is a podcast. Yeah, yeah. who knows? Who yeah, that he is right. Well, you know what? I think that's that's one thing I can tell you as an artist um, who puts out music and has interactions with people is that you know when you put out music, you really there's all kinds of people who are going to be into your music. All, the, all different kinds of people. People who are just dig it who are musicians people who are like you know just like the style of music people who are fans people who aren't fans and then you have people who are you know looking for um like a connection that maybe is more than is appropriate if for the situation too and yeah it definitely know, steers me towards people too you know it's it steers me towards you know music's not the product anymore no but the argument is was it ever right i wonder yeah i mean i i wonder i mean for me it was I right, and same for me, right? Yeah. That's why I find it so bewildering. Yeah, I, I remember thinking, like, as long as the music's great, I don't care. Yep. You know, you can murder puppies in the night with a machete. If that's uh, maybe not puppies. I'm just thinking what's a terrible thing. I, but I would still like the music because I don't care about what that is. You know what I mean? Uh, art and artist separation, you know what I mean? I mean, if Michael Vick, like, released an album, <laughs> I'd, you know, I'd be like, eh, It'd be the greatest he, death you know, metal album ever. Not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, puppies off limits. Humans, murder all the humans you want. <laughs> just don't murder the puppies. I just think that, like, you know, it's there's there's all kinds of people who are going to like what you put out if you're an artist. Whether, what kind of, whether you're a musician, if you're an actor, if you're a comedian, you know, if you're a writer, painter, whatever it is, there's all kinds of people who are going to appreciate the art that you create. Um, so you have to find a way to navigate those relationships in a respectful way. But at the same time, you know, I, I don't know why everyone feels like they need to be all up in the business of everyone else, though. Yeah, yeah. that phenomenon... Um, yeah, that's just interesting to me. I uh, So there's a documentary on Hulu that we were talking about earlier about uh, indie folk duo Tegan and Sarah okay, that yeah. I recommend everybody go watch. It's on Hulu, don't we? Yeah, have whether you're a huge fan of uh, indie folk or not, it's worth the, it's worth the view. Yeah, I, yeah, their music's really good. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's really well-crafted pop music, but in, in a much more organic way. Okay. Um, and, and some so they of the don't use any pesticides in the creation of the music. <laughs> Correct. Uh, there's there's some synths, but the but the synth sounds feel more like from the '80s to me. Mm -hmm. um, it just the music's good. It's it's catchy. It's good. Uh, so they kind of kind of reminds me a little bit of what you're describing. Reminds me of Gotcha. You know that that artist. Oh, I thought that was like a card game or something. Uh, G a G o t y e. Gotcha. He had that one song. Somebody I used to know was like the one hit he had. But he's, you know, I'm, he reminded me of like if like uh, like uh, I don't know like some kind of folk indie acoustic guy and like um, and Peter Gabriel had a baby. That's kind of how oh, he reminds me. Cool. It's kind of like that. Not as good though. Not as good. As, he was he was good, yeah. but he wasn't like Peter Gabriel good. But it was like that. Some synthy stuff, but kind of acoustic pop too. And cool. And it was it was cool. So yeah. As a side note, I think I think today's topic also kind of serves the you know music that speaking for myself music that i like that isn't necessarily rock or metal isn't at all rock or metal yeah uh tegan and sarah got signed by neil young yeah. in the early 2000s famous uh you know southern man hater <laughs> started the famous neil young leonard skinner you know rap war of the 1970s oh, the, uh, the neil, <laughs> yeah right you, well yeah rap beef's got nothing Yo, on, you don't talk yeah. about us you canadian son of <laughs> bitch yeah you know, <laughs> Gonna go yeah. homeless in my Pantera. He's like, yeah. <laughs> get ready to throw down. Just wait until you see this damage done. Right? <laughs> anyway, so um, I don't know what I was I'm trying to do. I don't know. I, that's just my to... way. Of, I'm trying to derail you for some reason. <laughs> no, that's okay. I've been getting derailed all day because, as we know, I'm I'm a poor communicator. I know you are not. You are <laughs> certainly not. 
I, <laughs> uh, this podcast is evidence to the contrary, my friend. Ah, oh, why? Well, thank you. are too kind. Um, I am very kind. You are too kind. But yes. Um, so, <laughs> uh, so the whole documentary. So, so when the when the band, the group, the sisters Tegan and Sarah, yeah, as an just give some artistic, time, Tegan yep. and Sarah. Yeah, yeah. So when they're part of their rise to popularity or part of their career's trajectory it you know they were very engaged with their fans yes right? like very much so like, <clears throat> yeah yeah you're talking like, like a, <clears throat> walking the lines to the shows and you got to people. figure early 2000s you know cyber security wasn't what it is now you know it just probably you know early social media you know right yeah, yeah. back to like message boards and stuff like that i mean like thing know. like myspace era yeah, yeah. Probably early Facebook. Man, I yeah, miss yeah. MySpace. Yeah, me Facebook too. sucks so bad. Yeah, it does. Man, MySpace was much better for musicians, no doubt. If yeah. there's anything anyone takes away from this podcast, it, it should be that, like, <laughs> like, like the late stage capitalist effect of any like art form is always garbage <laughs> you know well i mean you could argue that any time and period you can stop and look at it and there's gonna be a huge swath of this garbage and yeah those, definitely you know I mean? right. and then a bunch of good stuff it just feels like the good stuff's been like almost like a, a good sauce getting cooked out of the thing right yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah. You know, the dilution of yeah. the sauce yeah, yeah exactly yeah it's um, the dilution yeah. of the sauce the cutting of the string Wait, balls this, this is just water this is all this is water what happened to the flavoring it's like right. all this nonsense you know it's like yeah anyway sorry Yes, my bridge has no receptacle. It's been diluted. <laughs> yes. So, uh, so, so they were really engaged with their fans, right? Yeah, yeah. So you know, which is, honestly, a lot of artists take that path now. They take the super engagement kind of path. You know right. I mean? Well, it's just yeah. it's like the you know a while back, you know, you asked a student about why do people listen to Post Malone? Yeah. And they said. Uh, well, it's usually because like, I like his TikTok or I like his, you know, his Instagram page or whatever. Yeah, or yeah. maybe they just like him. Yeah, which is weird to It's me. totally weird to yeah, me, yeah, right? Like, uh, is he good at anything, though? Then why would you care? You know, it's like, Right. Yeah. So there's this... Um, also, I've never felt like this huge... Like, even, you know, the people I'm the biggest fan of the world, I don't, like, want to be up in their business. I don't be like, you know, hey, Eddie, what'd you have for breakfast this morning? You know, yeah, I, I, I just... I, that, uh, that's weird to me that you want to be, like, they're not your buddy. That's like, that's like a hero. That's someone you just let, let them do their thing and let them create their art. You should let them have the space to do that. Because you know they're I mean? humans just like we are, yeah. right? Like, I just, the, I mean, maybe when I was a teenager, I mean, I remember being a teenager going to NAM and meeting, you know, like, I remember when I met George Lynch, I was maybe the first time, I was maybe 17. Yeah. He was at the Sands Amp booth or something. Yeah, I was like, it was 19, probably late 90s, right? 96. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was there. And, and you know what? Mm -hmm. I met George, I shook his hand, and I said, Hey, you know, thanks to you, I'm a better guitar player. Thanks, man. Yeah. And that's what I said to George Lynch. Yeah, yeah. As a teenager, right? I yeah. wasn't just like, oh my God, dude, George. What was it like when you created Breaking the Chains? You know, right. Like, <laughs> okay, like, you know. Yeah, there's something. So uh, I feel fortunate to have grown up, you know, in in the music industry, more or less. Yeah, yeah. You know, where I was able to meet people I looked up to, like, as human beings, right? Yeah, but you never had that attitude of, I'm going to fanboy out on somebody and then, like, you know, that's. No. But also, the, the expectation that you were going to know more about them wasn't there either. It was sort of like, yeah. you know, guys like Vi and Satriani and Yngwie were, like, on this, like, hill that like olympus where like the gods live you can never even thought right. you'd ever talk to them and you didn't want to you didn't expect it you just wanted them to make creations for us every year or two yeah and then you want to check out their creation and and then and be inspired by it and then try to yeah. learn how to do new stuff yeah. or you know there'd be like That's that what I mean, article by being inspired like, by it yeah you know, like how, what, what do you, how do you think what kind of tools do you use that guitar kind of for the practicing musician <laughs> would release like the steve Vai lesson yeah. and or you'd read the minor notes that. and see all that gear they use and they talk about like you know the recording something a little tidbit about recording the song or whatever and that was all you cared but you didn't want to know like you know what kind of eggs did you have for breakfast this morning? Or like, you know, where are you at? Are you in Ibiza this, this week? Like, how's your vacation going? Oh my God! Yeah, oh, well. right. That whole that's like that's weird to me. The fans want to be that engaged. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I just I wonder. You know, I'm not sure what the connection is, but there is definitely just an emptiness in American society, maybe world <laughs> society. You know, what I think it is though. I think that the creators of Facebook and MySpace and Instagram and stuff like that, mostly Mark Zuckerberg, but um, and right. I, I don't, I'm not trying to speak for him. I don't know the man, but I, I don't feel like what it became is what he intended it for it to become. I think he, he like thought, hey, this is a cool way for people to like, keep track with each other. He probably didn't feel too far down the road like what it was going to be. Like, oh, eventually people are going to put nasty messages and political agendas and, and use 
resist the cyber bully and well i mean he and, did yeah. know that because the algorithm seeks out outrage so yeah i don't think that was i don't think from... that the creators were thinking that way though i think that they because they kind of had a myopia about like they lived in this sort of bubble of like-minded people who would use them for certain things i don't think that they thought like when you when you let everybody in the world have access to this thing, they yeah. didn't think about how everyone in the world would act, would react differently to it. You know, that yeah, makes sense. Z- Zuckerberg is a businessman. I mean, you know, he stole well eventually, the, but at first he was just thinking, hey, this is a cool idea. Well, he st- yeah. he stole the idea from two other Harvard classmates. Wow, they should make a movie about that. That's not. I know, compelling. right? Um, you know, but do you know what I mean? He, that wasn't thinking, hey, this is going to ruin humanity. <laughs> you, you, know, you know, a long time. <laughs> it's like this has stuck with me for years. Uh, so I was very close to my second cousin, twice removed. Here's what that means. So my grandfather's, uh, no, I guess he'd be my first cousin twice removed. My grandfather's cousin, Hmm. uh, oddly enough, his name was Skip. This is not to be confused with Skip Majora, the man that I worked for. The late Skip Majora. Yes, yes, rest in peace. Um, This is is Skip McGinnis, right? So Skip, you know, this is my family in Chicago, right? My dad lived in Chicago for a long time. Yep. Um, Skip's Skip's wife Ruth was a music teacher. Oh, cool! Yeah, that was that was you know I I feel like Ruth kind of for so, somehow Ruth kind of gave me a permission structure to say yeah I can just be a music teacher yeah yeah right I can just be a guitar teacher like yeah, yeah. that's totally honorable because Ruth was awesome and she taught a bunch of people and anyway so uh so so Skip I think he used to work for um. I think he sold insurance. Anyway, so, you know, and he's he's been deceased now for like 10, 15 years, okay. 15 years maybe, because um, he was my grandfather's cousin. So, you know what I mean? That sure. gives you an idea. <clears throat> you know, um, and he, he used to, so the last, so the like, last couple times I saw him, I would have been in my 20s. And that, so that was during like the darkness of my sales career selling like door hardware and shit. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and Skip, Skip used to say to me, Ryan sell intangibles. Okay. Yeah. What's so the intangibles of a doorknob exactly? There aren't any. That's why it sucks. <laughs> right? So, the, so, the, so like a doorknob is the opposite, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's an actual physical thing, and that physical thing, yeah. and that physical thing, it might not show up on time. It might. It's going to have to have a warranty on it. You know, a lot of what I did when I was repping was trying to put out fires and fix stuff. Mm. Um, one time when I was uh, I was selling digital doorknobs. Wow, that must be a terrible way to sell oh, digital. Fuck, it was horrible. Here's an idea of a doorknob. Would you like to buy it? Yeah, well, you know, well, yeah, I mean, yeah it's, all, it's commercial. And yeah, you deal with a lot of locksmiths. There was, uh, there was this, like, down in Southern California, there was this Naval Academy for... Um, oranges, right? They sold oranges? Correct. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a good one. It was a pretty lean... It's the only kind I do. Come on. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of lint around there, and it kept fucking up the locks. Uh, the whole so, industry was built up, making some sweaters out of that land dude amazing. i'll tell you what man yeah. those digital locks like they haunt me man like if anyone's gone to because well, it exists in a platonic form outside of reality and space <laughs> right <laughs> yeah that's it right. haunt me too <laughs> <laughs> the idea of a perfect doorknob you exactly. know? Like, oh my god it can never be touched by humanity dude i was playing i was playing i was playing the new so this is the same lock that beeps when you're at the pharmacy at walgreens it's an alarm lock deal 2700 oh my god that's the company giving away all for. the secrets here come on man what the hell? yep yeah dude i was i, I was playing i was this playing is getting, this is bordering on industrial espionage right now, you know. What Dude, I, mean? I was playing. I was <laughs> playing the new Silent Hill 2 video game the other day, and there is a door on a building in that game that I have to find the code for. Okay, and it looks exactly like a deal. Dude, I had to stop playing the game for. A while. I switched. Walk to, I'm away. doing. I'm yeah. doing a run of Alien Isolation right now for Spooky Season. Uh, just, uh, yeah. you know, I'll come back to it, but. Yeah, so that just totally haunts me. So, you know, so that's like a a tangible product, right? So there was this Naval Academy for, uh, it was like boarding, you know, it's like military school for like junior high kids and stuff. Okay. And at the time there were issues with, um, like they were still trying to weatherproof this entry level version of the product. Okay. Like the way they weatherproof it is they just dip the circuit board in epoxy. It's kind of like how you pot a pickup. Yeah, yeah. But they hadn't been doing this on the ones that that school bought, so the kids would piss on the locks and then they would short circuit and then they'd have to get a warranty replacement. It was a big fucking mess. Wow. So that's why you don't sell tangible products. I didn't know the door nail or door doorknob pissing was such a big problem in the Oh, academies. dude, yeah. it's just the whole what a oh man, I'm so glad I don't do that. Yeah, I'm living. so glad for you. Oh, Thank God. you very yeah. much. 
uh, you know, as as instructors, right? We sell intangibles, right? We we offer information. The pro the product is the information that and the support and the feedback and you know everything that we do as teachers to help our students grow, right? Yep. But that's an intangible, right? It's not. Know, a, it's intangible? not a physical. It's intangible. I mean, you can t- gain all this information. You know, it's a, yeah, it's, yeah, that's intangible. Yeah. That's that's information. Information is intangible. Yes. Yes. By taught by an expert who's done this with thousands of other students. You know what I mean? It's, yes. You know, so I think yeah. Zuckerberg just thought, here's an intangible thing that we can we can extract money from advertisers and people for. I think that grew over time, though. I think the the first, I don't think they necessarily had a great idea what the business model was until they got into it, and then it just sort of like one brick fell another brick fell and kind of led them to that i don't think that their thinking was like hey we're gonna create this thing that's gonna create the downfall of any kind of you know any kind of well they did personal th- relationships and, and the economies and you know and what they they didn't crashing like in you know the freaking governments of third world countries and stuff i'll tell you what they, <laughs> I don't think they they didn't think that because yeah. they don't give a shit well they don't i don't know that that's true i think you're selling them a little short i think a lot of people especially people who are in the the um sort of you know product development people at like you know places like facebook instagram they're actually good nice wonderful people well oh, i was talking about zuckerberg, but zuckerberg I, think, I don't think he gives a fuck i think he doesn't now but i think well he does only as much as how much that could be like a kind of financial blowback on his company if he does something that's seen as you know, you can sue him over or right. like antitrust violation or something like that yeah i, I mean uh, I, so he I cares mean, in that way but then that, but that's what happens when you come a mega maniacal multi-billionaire you know one of the richest people well in the, the, world. Me- the mega maniacal part all already came first right that's like so like the sociopaths in society aren't all murderers they're mostly ceos, CEOs. and politicians yeah. Yeah, that's true you, like you have to have an empathy deficit in order to become successful i feel to confident that scale. though in, in like listening to the interviews of like jack dorsey and people like that that uh, i don't think that they saw it was going to become what it became i don't think that 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 was in their mind at all when they were creating it because i think that they had a myopia they had like a they lived in a village of like-minded people who come from the same background, who have the same. It's almost like an echo chamber. Sociopaths and, are also charming. Well, I don't, I don't know deceptive. that all of the CEOs and all the people are, are sociopaths. I think the knowing some of these people personally, like not 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 those Jack Dorsey, not the Mark Zuckerberg, but people who work at the tech business personally, they're some of the most wonderful, empathetic. Uh, educated, well-meaning people I've ever met. Oh, I'm talking you know. about the people at the very, very. Top. No, I'm not talking about those guys. I'm that's about the, that's the, who I'm talking the, about. The, the 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 heart and the lungs and the liver that makes that go. Is no, just, I'm talking these just, other people. I'm talking about. You, that, no, that, that's, I'm not talking about yeah. them at all. I'm yeah. just talking about the evil sociopathic brain. But I don't think that those guys intended that to become what it became. But you know, honestly, at the end of the day, the culpability lies in us because it's not what they created; it's how we used it, what they created. It's almost like the the the, the wings of men in Lord of the Rings. They was like not, you know, what men did with it was the wrong thing you know what i mean uh, we well, have the power but then, to, like yeah. what's the predisposition of men to do the wrong thing under those circumstances and which party knows better i mean yeah. this is where the moral which is hard to say there's, question there's definitely a, arises there's right? definitely like a plausible deniability on the part of the creators that they could say we had no idea this yeah. was going to happen you know it's like it's like it's feeding, impossible to prove it's like intent. feeding matthew perry ketamine right yeah, yeah. he was already a drug addict so why are you giving more drugs to an addict to solve his drug problem right yeah. Yeah. like so whose fault is that is it matthew's perry's Perry's fault, or is there some culpability on the part of well, the people who gave there's him definitely the some, uh, There's definitely some uh, sort of uh, things built into the algorithms that pr- that are you know driven by psychological factors that are understood by the people who design the algorithms about what's going to make something pop and not pop and how it affects the minds of people. It's like that sort of slot machine mentality that makes yep. people want to get it's that. It's the net. dopamine hit people yep. get. Exactly, and that sort of addicts people to that, and that's how, that's something built into the machine, too. Um, now, with that, this, this giant runaway corporation, that's that's how they make their money is those impressions and selling the advertising based on those impressions and then selling our d- data to you know the other nefarious third-party people, too. Yeah. Um, but that being said... Mm. I think that you know you get what you get. You get the the culture which you you get what you deserve. You you buy and create the culture that you have. So, the thing I don't get. Let's go back to the artist thing. Is, <laughs> yeah, is that why do you want to be that up in the business of, of your favorite artist? Yeah, like, and that's why, the how thing, does that right? enhance your enjoyment of their yeah. art? You know so I mean? like uh, so growing up when I worked in a little guitar shop, right? Well, first of all, I worked in a little guitar shop during an age when there were little guitar shops. Right, the internet fucked that up. Also, at an age right? when guitar ruled the world too. It did yeah. rule the world, yeah. right? But I mean, even even through the grunge apocalypse, like I was still working at a you know at a little guitar shop, yeah. uh, you know. And actually, you know what? The grunge apocalypse, if I'm objective, it also drove the sale of a lot of guitars, yeah. right? Like For if I'm just objective about it, yeah. right? We sold a lot of acoustics, and that's fine. We yeah. sold guitars, and people yeah. came to the shop. 
people took lessons, right? The, people you, left it, their houses. If you're like me, it makes you a little sad. It, well, yeah. it does. Yeah. It does. Yeah, but, like the, uh, the acoustic guitar is, is almost a full guitar. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost it's just there. very limited. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, you know, like, I, you know, I mean, I had my group of friends. I had responsibilities. I had keys to the store when I was a teenager. I, you know, I had... You know, that I, I had that to build self-esteem, right? Sure. You know, I, yeah. I had friends I could play music with. We all, got into, we all got into cars and went and had adventures and did stuff with other human beings face-to-face. Yes. And, you know, it, it was, was just... Was like so some, I don't... That I, was the social media at the time was like you guys would be in the car jamming out to some songs together. Right. You know, maybe it's, <laughs> be, you know, maybe it's because, in, in all seriousness, maybe it's because like I didn't give a fuck about meeting Kurt Cobain. I probably would have become an assassin if that had been the case. <laughs> he took care of that for me, yeah. which I guess he did one thing right. Thanks for listening to the Rocky Tower Confidential Podcast with Ryan and Scott. Please make sure you like, rate, and subscribe, but please do not show up to our house or hack our emails. Now back to the show. But anyway, you know, all the artists that I looked up to, like you said, like, you know, the Steve, like Ingve Malmsteen, right? Yeah. Like, he's a rock star. Yeah, he's living like, in Valhalla. You would never have a chance to come near him. You know yeah, I mean? like, yeah. who needs the Avengers? Because yeah. you've got all these, like, larger-than-life guitar players. Hell, yeah. even Kiss, larger-than-life, yeah. right? Well, they, vocalist, liter- too. I never thought, hey, I'm going to go hang out with David Coverdale, see what he's got going on. You know what I mean? That's, that never even occurred to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just, I always yeah. thought, like, man, maybe I could be, like, one of those guys one day. That would yeah. be, like, that, that looks like fun. I want to do that. But it was never like i want to dm paul stanley and develop a friendship yeah yeah there so there's just like you know i think that because all of those face-to-face like meeting places are gone so much shit happens online everything people live online okay that's why the internet goes out people lose their minds like oh my god i can't do anything it's like there was a time when there's without the yeah it's, there's a yeah. lot of people living mm-hmm. very like i mean studies prove right like these lonely isolated empty lives yeah, yeah. lives right? of quiet desperation is what they refer to it as yeah you yeah. know i mean the only thing that really matters in life it's the relationships you know back you when i was have, a kid we had know? loud angry desperation that's yeah. how we did it god damn it that's how that's the world right. intended and then some angry and- loud desperation <laughs> that's how it is yeah you know? yes and then there was like some quiet like the bible says like angry desperation like morrissey and uh, you know <laughs> the cure yeah. those little you know those guys are, like, cute like ah look at their desperation that's cute. So, so, you're so sad. <laughs> so, so the documentary is all about. So, in the early 2000s, Tegan and Sarah developed this fan base um, by being super accessible to their fans, right? Yeah, yeah. Like hanging out at the merch booth, doing autograph signings for hours I mean, and hours most, and most hours. Most do that stuff. That's not uncommon nowadays. You know, that's. I mean, maybe nowadays, yeah. but and I mean, look, there. And you know, it also kind of reminded me of. Um, you know, like after Ronnie James Dio died, like there were all these anecdotes about like one in particular that sticks out. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, a guy who like his friends bailed on him and he's just sitting out in, like in front of the, the arena in an empty parking lot and the tour bus pulls around and Ronnie James Dio tells him to hop in. Yeah. You know, takes him back to the hotel, feeds him dinner, then sends him home in the cab. Like, you know, yeah, that's awesome. That's right? building a, a, a memory of that person in forever that this is a solid dude. You know what yeah, I mean? but I mean, that anecdote didn't see the light of day, I think, and I could be wrong. I don't remember hearing that anecdote until after ronnie died yeah you know as as tribute to ronnie right yeah. but uh anyway so tegan and sarah developed this fan base they're super accessible like more accessible than we're used to kind of sound like our musical artists in that regard be. like as far as you know, being really open with their audience you know yeah i think so right yeah. they were you know this is again like the nascent days of of social media and stuff it's and, starting to resemble what we would recognize it as today yeah right so yeah. so i guess in like 2011 uh so somebody hacked into Tegan Quinn's email and also one of the like servers uh, for for the business, like you know, because of course they're you know a successful musical group, right? Mm-hmm. And so they've got like man- management. Yeah, there's PR management. Stuff, there's professional yeah. apparatus, yeah. right? So th- so th- somebody started impersonating Tegan, basically catfishing Tegan and Sarah's fans. Yeah, yeah. And these fans, you know, that would, like, send an email. And, I mean, you know, these are vulnerable Was people. Was it a financial thing at all, like trying to like, scam money out of them or something? It like, doesn't. You know. 
it doesn't seem like it based on the documentary. Again, I'd invite everybody to watch. It seemed like it was more, I mean, it was catfishing is what it was, right? Okay. So it started off where these fans thought they were, you know, by exchanging social media messages with who they thought was Tegan Quinn, mm -hmm. that person was then responding back and they developed relationships. Some of it got romantic. Oh, okay. Um and pretty, then after pretty gross I and mean, obviously that someone's impersonating someone else yeah it, so they so they named the catfisher Fegan for yeah. a fake tegan yeah, that happens a lot actually she reports like hey there's a fake you know whatever you know michelangelo Badio out there now we'll watch out for him yeah you know, that that's just weird yeah. man i can't it's I, just the attention economy man i think because people want attention they'll do whatever it takes to get that attention and if they have to like try and steal someone's identity it's like, so sick dude and then but i mean and then also i feel bad for the victims that would be yeah, I think have susceptible to all that. I yeah. just, I don't. I that, can't. That's something that would have never happened when we were kids because it was impossible for it to happen. You know what I mean? Was, well, do you yeah. think Ave Malmsteen wants to be like sending DMs? Like, you know what no, I mean? Of like, not. if if, if of it were, not. yeah, right. Like, yeah. if it were in, um, you know, if it were in like modern times, like I can't imagine. And maybe this is just because I'm old, but like on Instagram, right? I don't. Ingve Malms, I like I can't imagine just because of who Ingve is. Like, yeah. I can't imagine having a dm back and forth with fucking like i don't yeah. want to like yeah. that would It'd make be weird it would be weird i know yeah That's yeah like, like the whole person the whole personage of malmstein is that he is this like larger than life character yeah, that's and the thing i that just don't he's built his whole career on is that he's this, uh, like you know norse god who's come down to earth you know that kind of thing yeah, yeah like yeah. i know i know like yeah. you know ingve malmstein has to like squat and take a shit just like everybody else but or like i'm not he? or does it just or does he i don't magically know disappear then the whole room is filled with the smell of chocolate chip cookies that's, yeah, that's how yeah, it works thank for him you. exactly yeah. Exa right yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like every time he farts like a sweep arpeggio yeah, comes exactly. out. yeah. But, but it smells like cinnamon rolls <laughs> 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 or whatever that's that's how Ingve's physiology works. We're kind of breaking or, new sorry. ground here. It smells you know. like Swedish meatballs. <laughs> 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 this will then be cut off and stuck in the low pro edge trims. All right. So, yeah. <laughs> so you know, and, and dude, I've you know, I, as a teenager, I got to meet a lot. You know, I met Dimebag once. Yeah, yeah. Right, and I didn't. I didn't walk away thinking, oh, man, I wonder what I'm going to email Dimes management and be like, hit hey, remember tomorrow? And then, yeah. Yeah. Re hey, remember when yeah. I met you over by the cold cuts yeah, at the yeah. Washburn Monster yeah. Ball in 96? Yeah. You know, I, the closest thing is, you well, know, I had some interaction with uh, Scott Travis from Judas Priest. Yeah. You know, and that like he was kind enough to come and jam with my cover band. His suggestion, not mine. And yeah, I just I. You how know, much of I this is generational between like us being you know, the previous generation and not yeah. getting it? And how much of it is just the reality of the business being what it is? Because when you're trying to reach audience, and we've talked before that there's not any one culture anymore. There's not like there's a common shared culture that everyone yeah. has. So if you're an artist trying to reach an audience, really the best avenues that you have are social media. And, they, and, you know, what's going to drive more people is engagement. So if you can engage with your fans, get a lot of people talking, that's going to kick the algorithm in a certain way. So it's smart from a business perspective to right. be trying to reach for that kind of engagement, I, at least initially to build an audience. Um, I don't know that it's smart from a mystique kind of standpoint or like trying to build up that kind of thing, but it's almost impossible to build a mystique up the old way. You yeah, know, and that and, sucks, dude. You know, I want the mystique back. Yeah, because right? that actually served both parties. Yeah, you know, absolutely. It, really it kept did. a barrier there. Uh, you know, yeah. so Chapel Rowan, she's uh, like a pop singer that just recently uh, rose to prominence. And she's, there's something about the Grammys she was performing, right? Or yeah, if right, everyone's yeah. heard, you know, H O T T O G O, you know, it sounds I, I just like that. Hot not. to go. That's I, her single. I've never heard that, but it's, so yeah. one of my students turned me shockingly. On. A man in yeah. his forties would not know. Well, uh, so <laughs> a, one a metal so, fan in his forties, you know, it's like <laughs> you know. So one of my students turned me on to Chapel Roan, and uh, I'm not making a judgment call on the artist. Yeah, no, totally. Her, so, yeah, you so. know, she seems cool. Yeah, I. Uh, you know, and, and she, uh, you know, she does, she does like costumes and stuff. Okay, so kind of, not exactly, but you know how there's some theatrics with Lady Gaga's presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Seems like Chapel Rowan's kind of taking part of that. Similar yeah. in yeah. that way, right? Different kind of music, though. Yeah. Yeah, although the music's different, but yeah. I mean, she's clearly talented. I like that. It's you know, it seems like she actually sings, yeah. right? There's no robot voice. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm 
modern production, so I'm sure there's some auto tune somewhere. But she strikes me as someone who doesn't need auto tune. Yeah, I could sing. Yeah, yeah, I can actually could sing. pull it off live if you need. Yeah, absolutely yeah, yeah. right. I think she's a legitimate artist, right? Yeah. And uh, but then, uh, like, I guess Hot to Go was fe- it was featured on the commercial for this year's MTV Music Awards. And since I've got Comedy Central on in the house almost twenty four seven, like there were so like all through the months of of like July and August, like wherever I was in the house, H O T T O G O. Like I'll never forget it. It's been like that melody has been drilled into my brain. Okay. It, it became like a thing that I that I liked that now I ne- I never need to hear again. Okay, okay, fair enough. Yeah, not not based on its own merits. It's yeah. just it was on a commercial and yeah. like it followed me around the house. Yeah, it follows. Dude, especially yeah. when, like, uh, so this is on, like, direct TV, so we've got the main receiver in the living room. Okay. And then it communicates with, like, a sub-receiver in the bedroom, yep. but there's always a slight... I was talking shit about you guys behind your back and stuff. That's right. <laughs> there's always a slight time delay, so I'd hear Look hot to go in fox. one room ha, and then I'd... <laughs> oh, oh, look, he's in there again. Oh, what an idiot. Ah, ah, like, just ah, when you ah, think ah. it's over yeah. in one room, if you're yeah. walking towards the other room, it starts again. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah. But, uh, so she's starting to speak out about out like you know you know hey paparazzi fuck off and like no i don't want to like i i respect her because she wants to put that barrier back up yeah yeah between the artist and the fans well fair enough that who's the biggest artist in the world right now uh taylor swift obviously yeah, there's definitely a barrier between her and her fans you know what i mean there's, there's gotta be right yeah, i mean there's so it's not one of those things like you know and i think that's healthy for everybody i think yep. we need to all recognize that there needs to be a barrier between the fans and the artists there can't be that wide open communication like when you're starting out you need to have some com- kind of communication but even for a band like Exagis, you know like there's just not enough time in the day to sit there and then like chat back and forth with people and it's not that there's anything against anybody it's just like you know you've, you've got we create art and do other things in life right. you can't sit there well and all i mean day, hell if, if know, anybody wants to get to know us they can listen to, to this podcast the yeah. podcast right exactly. this so, gets to two hours ish or run around there every single dude, week of, i, I love know. that when i die in like 15 to 20 years <laughs> like, that there's gonna be this record <laughs> of of what i said and thought about things uh, i guess I, so it's, yeah, it's yeah. a nice little time digital time capsule i refuse to ever think about things before i say them I just say them you know what I mean? <laughs> right that's that seems wrong oh right? <laughs> carts and horses must be put in the right order <laughs> right so so i like how chapel roan is speaking out about that and i just i don't know man like i if like if you and i were teenagers in the modern era like i don't i don't know i don't think we i think i, I feel grateful that because we did grow up like more or less in the music industry even it, even for me if it was music retail yeah, yeah. like i always viewed I don't know. Like, I mean, I got to meet, I've, I've met just about every, like almost every, a a good number of guitar players that I looked up to when I was a kid, Mm -hmm. I've had an opportunity to meet personally and it wasn't, you know, and it was just, guys are just another dude like, and they were human beings. And I, and like, so I had these cool, like real human moments. Right. I don't know, but like, I would never think to, you know, there's the term Stan, which is like a hybrid of stalker and fan. Why do we need another, why, why do we need another name for fan? Just fan's fine. Well, we're, this we're is good like obsessive fine. fan. Is that, I know, I've, I, that's, I've heard it actually used interchangeably with fan, like Stan and fan is just Yeah, like, I, I never knew what Stan really why meant do we, until I watched this Tegan and Sarah need documentary. Why do we need another, why do we need another name for this? I don't, well, it's I, because, well, because fan is short for fanatic. I get so it. So now it's like uh, you're the. Stalker you're, fanatic. Yeah, like there's competition. Okay, so there were always fan clubs right like okay. there was always the kiss army yeah that's true right or uh god what was twisted I'll never sisters go the, the kiss army invaded croatia that was interesting you know, yeah <laughs> or, the, or twisted sisters was the sick motherfucking friends of twisted Sisters. <laughs> yeah that's cool that's which cool. was great right yeah. so you know i mean there's always been fan clubs and uh but you know i don't this is this is different right this like online like you said the competition for attention it's yeah, like yeah. the stan is trying to be more of a fan than yeah. you are well that's part of how they can see their identity is like what, what what is about you if you say they meet somebody like tell me about yourself well i'm a giant fan of you know dude that's whoever. so pathetic yeah well everyone's gotta live their life you know what i mean that's why i look at it and whatever it is that but you should look for value in your own self rather than what you're into or, yeah, or mean, by the way or what you're not into i think that's another thing people define themselves by both what they love and what they hate and i think that's 
it's terrible. You should just define yourself first of all, and then enjoy all the wonderful things that are out there in life. But find the yep. meaning in your own life rather than looking for the outside. That's that's just yeah. Scott's I wholeheartedly Scott's agree. advice to the people out there. Yeah, yeah it's be like, internally uh, validated. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. But then there's a million wonderful things to enjoy, and then you just have to take art as it comes and say, okay, this art I, I appreciate, even from the same artist. Like there's every uh, you know artist that puts out stuff who I really appreciate doesn't mean that everything they do is brilliant, you know. But just take the stuff as it comes and enjoy it. Like, dude, just go smell roses. Go stand on the cliff over Point Reyes and listen to the sea. Right. You know, like, go go have a nice dinner with your friends. You know, like that's that's what matters. You dude, know, what I mean? oh, absolutely, you know, wholeheartedly make agree. music that you mm. that you are proud of and want to share with the world. And don't do that with any expectations other than I created this piece of art. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and that's I think those are the things that are real and that matter. I wholeheartedly you know? and, agree. And I, but I think that um, that's something that's from uh-huh. the perspective of a man in his 40s who's who's been through some things in life. I've been I got some some scars in my life. I've gone through some shit. Yeah. Yes, you know, been, been think, around the block a little. I'll yeah, tell you. But when so you're here, 16, it's sometimes you don't have any kind of weight. You don't have enough pelts in the wall to actually know yourself that well necessarily. You know what I mean? I mean, and, maybe these days, because when I was 16, you know, I like I've taken. Dude, uh, okay, so I love King Diamond, the band no, King what? Diamond. I know. I, this is like the first I've heard of this. But, oh, my God, all these years into the podcast and our band and our friendship, and I'm just finding this yeah. out now. Oh, you know what? You so, a- okay, so Andy LaRock. What else don't the- I know about you, Brian, if that is your real yeah. your name? I don't okay, so, <laughs> well, so my whole life, I, dude, on multiple occasions, I've taken someone else with me to go see King Diamond. Mm-hmm. You know, I've never been backstage. I, you know, I've got friends in the industry that have had connections with Andy LaRock. I've never once thought of sending Andy LaRock an email. Yeah. Uh, when I was buying tickets for the upcoming King Diamond show, um, you know, there. So, and, uh, you know, this also kind of got me thinking about because every year, people, my students, ask me if I'm going to AfterShock. Oh yeah. And. I'm never going to Aftershock. Yeah, but that's a, they're going to ask next year, too. So no, is, I know, but... This doesn't solve that, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> you, you know, like, the, the years when there were enough bands on the bill at Aftershock... That were worth seeing. That were worth yeah. seeing. Like, yeah. those years are over because yeah. the 90s nostalgia is starting to yeah. kick in, right? Like, For about 10 more years, we'll be back in the midst of that, you know? Right. I mean? And there were yeah. bands I would have enjoyed seeing yeah, I think Maiden, Aftershock Anthrax, this year. Anthrax, uh, was it? Yeah. Um, I, I would have enjoyed Falling in Reverse, man. Yeah, yeah. Their first album was awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, sure, there's bands that I would have enjoyed, but, you know, like, like I would have wanted to see Iron Maiden, but, I mean... That's like seventy year old Iron Maiden. Yeah. Like I already saw Iron Maiden like twenty years that, ago. That's and before. good for the people who've never got a chance to. You know, that, that's one of the lies, like legacy bands like Priest and Maiden and yep. those. And they're go, they're basically giving the youngins who are fans a chance to see them live one or two more times. I, I wholeheartedly yeah. agree. So, so I'm just saying I'm not gonna. You know, I'd have to cancel two days of work, which cost me money, yeah. and then I'd have to. Even if I, ha- I mean, there's been years when I was offered free VIP passes, which you know, for which I'm humbly grateful. I I pass those on to someone else. It just it would cost me too much money, and I mean I've I've seen the like there just isn't enough meat on the bone, right? Yeah. It's not it's not like yeah. It's, yeah. Okay, King Diamond, however, right? whatever it takes, right? Well, yeah, whatever it fucking takes, yeah, man. Yeah. Like I've already well, I mean, luckily my student, it, it's close enough to Thanksgiving that. No, or, or whenever we're recording because it could be any time, really. Yeah, so I, I I was fortunate that I'm not going to have to cancel any lessons to go yeah, this yeah. year, but you know, so there are VIP meet and greet you know passes available for king diamond in oakland right okay um so you know i i could be you know and dude i'm into king diamond like when it's all said and done i'll be into it for about 1500 bucks yeah 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 but not because i bought some stupid fucking vip passes right i'm spending the rest of the money to take four friends with me to go see him yeah yeah you know i'm flying my buddy back from iowa so plane tickets very generous of you by the way Uh, yeah that's awesome man dude i love king diamond i love my friends i want everyone to go and have it like i want it to be an awesome experience at king diamond with the people who i actually care about and with whom i have a relationship yeah. Now, I want King Diamond and Andy LaRock to be profitable. Yeah, sure. But well, they are. Dude, I mean, they wouldn't be playing, you know, the touring in the world. They weren't making money doing it. Right. You know, but, yeah. dude, buying, like, a VIP pack, there's something undignified. I don't know if I I don't know, far, man. man. I, I think that you got to do whatever you got to do. If you feel like you, you love no, the fans I, I, much I, and, and not on the part of King Diamond. No, no, I mean, I'm talking about the, uh, the fans. If that's what makes you happy and the band's offering it, go for it. You I know, mean, I guess if you've got, like, 
a ton of disposable income. Which, which a lot of people do. And which, isn't that cool? The yeah, idea there's some, tech, there's some tech billionaire who's like, I'm really into King Diamond. That's pretty cool. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, you know? so I'll just... I'll, well, the t- if the, well, the tech billionaire, I think we already established, was a sociopath. But, but, but there's probably like some of those dudes who are like, you know, like <laughs> high up in the rent management who got tons of money who were probably big King Diamond fans. You know what I mean? It's, that's cool. Yeah, well, you know, so bringing it back to my own personal decisions, <laughs> right? I'm just like, saying that's a cool thing. I don't, I don't judge that. If the, Like if people want to do... I remember when we did the show with Scott Allen Project, we opened for mm-hmm. Kingdom Come. I remember there's a bunch of people there when we were sound checking who are doing like the meet and greet thing. And I was just like, that's cool. I mean, if that's, you know, if you love the band, this is your chance to meet the guys and get an autograph and stuff. That's cool. It's all Dude, good. Dude, you could be like, if you did all King, Kingdom Come and King Diamond covers, you could Kingdom, be like, Kingdom, Kingdom Diamond Kingdom, Come? Yeah, right. <laughs> You'd be like, Kingdom Come Diamond. <laughs> okay, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, Kingdom Come Diamond. <laughs> I don't know. Um, so. So, you know, so I've got the disposable income to spend $1,500 on a concert. If it's King Diamond, I'm going to go all out, and I'm going to spend most of that money to bring my friends with me. Sure, that's wonderful. right. That's yeah. that's my attitude about it. That's how to have the best possible experience, right? It's got to be, like, a band I really give a shit about, yeah. and I want to be there with my friends, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't care about an autograph signing. I don't want to... I don't want to shake someone's hand for like two minutes and not, you know, if it's a random, you know, if, if we met in like an industry like setting, yeah, but you're also like a musician show, too. That's yeah. the difference. You're, you're a person who would meet someone in that scenario. So there's not, but for someone who, who has no connection to the music as business at all, that's probably the only path to meeting somebody. And if that's something that, you know, I'm, like, I'm not going to judge just like I was saying before, like you do you, whatever makes you happy, whatever is, you know, what's the old saying, follow your bliss, like whatever it is that you, you think that these make you a happy person? Go spend that money. If you have the money to spend, go spend the money. Do what you got to do. It's all good. You know what I mean? It's sure. I guess the needle I'm trying to thread. I know. I get you. I, I'm not giving it to you though. I'm from Charlotte. I'm sorry, no, man. you're not. No, you're not. So <laughs> I, I guess you know. I think if everybody, I'm just, I'm just saying that's whatever, man. It's all good. It's your cash. Spend it how you want to. I you know, think the people yeah. that I think the people that are developing the toxic fandom problem. I think a very good portion of them are vulnerable to that. Being like the meet and greet, pay meet and greet thing. So well, I mean, I don't know if that's necessarily toxic fandom. I just, I don't know. I personally am not going to spend, like, if I did spend that money, I'd walk away feeling fucking stupid. Yeah. Which well, is weird because that's different than the, you know, yes, our artists should be like on a pedestal. I don't want to demystify King Diamond. No, I, I just want to go see the show and the theatrics and it's awesome. Yeah, and have the experience life. be what it is. That's and what you're paying for. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like I don't want to. Um, but for other people, they you know they want to say, hey, I met you know whoever Joe Perry from Aerosmith or something. You just pick, you know, that's the, something they want like a, a bragging right to talk to their friends. And, okay, that's, that's kind of cool, like I went to the basketball game and I shook hands with Steph Curry or something. It's like you know have just that like thing that they can kind of brag about you know what i mean this but what is, but so but what's the brag i guess that you met the famous person and how is that what I, are, what's the brag i, I don't get, get it either, like how is that that's, that's, that's not, okay, impr- it's not it's not my money i'm not that's not it, impressive so. that's like I, not an achievement I, you, I, like you didn't talk about anything meaningful I, or well, maybe like 20 years from now at some kind of con they'll say meet the man who met uh, king diamond <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't know so i just think it's kind of weird and i think the people so you know it's a sign of the time like the person who becomes the toxic uh the person who becomes the tegan catfish okay like it sucks that that person like didn't have something like being part of a musical community or an artistic community or a creative community of some other variety yeah it's just different now you know what i mean people yeah i mean i don't think that it's that those things don't exist but it's they exist in an ecosystem that includes social media and that's a huge part of how people keep track of each other and talk and communicate through the day um you know when we were kids we would see our friends we go home and then we'd see our friends again tomorrow we didn't go home and then get a chance to dm and like 15 times overnight so you're never really away from each other that's yeah. how things work now and then a lot of times people have you know friends who live across the country or live across the world and they'll keep track of them that way and you know i, I guess that's a positive um in terms of the artists reaching to the fans thing I, I don't look one thing i know for sure is it's not going backwards it's not going to be like we can't put that genie back in the bottle um, well maybe chapel Rome can but maybe i think over time we can find a more of a healthy balance yeah between like you know okay the artist has to exist and do their thing and you shouldn't have it, an expectation of that kind of wide open you're just their whole life's an open book kind of thing but you know some artists play into that too they'll you know put videos of them and their girlfriend or whatever or they're like here's my kids and we're here and they'll do like every like two three days either them or their social media team will do it you know what i mean and i feel like 
that kind of but you know that also mirrors society as a, as a whole like a lot of yeah. oversharing is going on like people yeah. are, are really feeling the need to share every aspect of their life which is unnecessary and not healthy you know what i mean Agreed. it's not we're not meant as a species to be mugging for the camera at all times you know what i mean that's that's not a healthy thing for and, us to do you know and you know man we live in you know we live in an era where like everything is so demystified yeah there's no mystique anywhere you're right yeah even dude, like movie stars and stuff it's like oh you know what did jennifer aniston have for lunch this morning oh it was like she had ch- uh, chili rellenos uh, on her omelet or like who ca- like how, why do we need to know this you know it's like oh. yeah and, and you know like the history channel is like running ancient aliens on repeat like all fucking day long well the good news is that's for like nobody there's the, the, the ratings for that so minuscule actually you know <laughs> no, it's at the, it's it's all for middle-aged men. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's for middle-aged men that feel like they don't have like they they need to have some sort of sense of control. Oh, you they've, know, like they've the done conspiracy studies. theory, like all oh, the aliens built the pyramids and stuff like that. Or, you know, right, oh, okay, it's okay. a weird phenomenon. I don't know that I'm necessarily proffering a solution here, but it's just you know I remember being a kid watching in search of with Leonard Nimoy and they'd have like the Loch Ness monster episode and it was all spooky and like mysterious and you could get lost in your imagination like wondering right now I can just myth sort of yeah yeah I mean now you can just you know go online and read an expert saying yes well there's not enough food sources for a plesiosaur (laughs) here's all like the chance of surviving the Cretaceous extinction are so small right or like (laughs) like, 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 here's why Bigfoot's not real and then it's like oh these are all the facts cool so like nothing oh that doesn't nothing exists anymore yeah and so I don't know. There's well, actually, we should be very proud as a species that we've come to a point where science can, you know, explain things. That's, no, I, I that's agree. We be very happy and proud of as a culture, you know. And and I think maybe it wouldn't be so acute if people could just let their artists be have some mystique and be larger than life. Hmm, I've never thought I mean? about that connection before. I have to think about more before I proffer any kind of opinion on that. But I I, I feel like it's just a, a, a attention seeking thing. And I think it's uh, people, you know, have unhealthy expectations of what kind of connection they're going to have with their favorite artists that, that didn't exist until par- social media. This has partially been fed into by artists who really have gone full on into that. And now it's like, well, this person does this. Well, why aren't you doing this? You know, and so if you're yeah. an artist who doesn't feel like you want that big of an open thing, then it's kind of seen as like you're some kind of, you know, some kind of asshole or something like that. You're not trying to reach out to your fans. You don't care about your fans or something like that. I, I think that's it's a it's a weird thing that people have to kind of figure out how to balance. I, I don't know. For me, I really struggle with social media in the sense that i, I just yep. i have struggled to find it its value like what is it bringing to the table you know what i mean yeah i, I mean i've reconnected with some old friends i mean dude i took like a seven eight or nine year break from <sighs> social media you, entirely man. dude I'm, I'm now i'm falling off of instagram too because yeah, yeah. like i just it's just you know it's, hard it's to just keep... people sending me fucking cat videos yeah. now and like or hey, weird you like know. little stuff like hey look at this cool little thing and like all right cool but like i have a life i'm trying to live <laughs> well <laughs> right like, yeah i've got i don't, don't want to be a dick to you <laughs> but i've got like 20 of these other messages i gotta go back it's like you know it's like at the same time i just don't have time for this dude you know here's I mean? how bad it is like mm-hmm. the, my instagram notification is like the same ding that my text message notification is and like I don't even want to pick up my phone to change that setting because I don't want to scroll through menus and yeah. I don't want to. God, fuck, man! I just don't want to do any. I of hope it. that that eventually social media will kind of morph into something more valuable or more useful to society. But I don't have high hopes for that. But I'm hoping that eventually the evolution process will take take <laughs> hold and it'll become something of value. But you know, the same. That being said, you can't become a dinosaur too and just say, "Hey, this is how it's always been done, so we should just do it the way it's always been done." Of that course, doesn't work either. So you have to try and embrace it in whatever way you can. Cause it's just part of what it is and then realize it's going to change every 18 months at you know, being generous 18 yes. months it's well gonna, you know, it, it's you know it's going to change every you know so often and you have to be able to roll with that too because that's just how marketing works now you know, whether yeah. it be for our album or for you know uh, my solo albums or teaching practice or whatever it is you're doing you're trying to promote art the um, you know instruments that you're endorsing with or whatever you know you have to find a way to use that channel but yeah i just i, I find that it, it's it's a lot of work for not a lot. Of, there's not a lot of ROI when it comes to social media. There's not a lot of like, you know, you're not getting a lot back for all they're putting. I mean, out, somebody know? must be, but I mean, I just don't want to respond to social media messages all the time. Yeah. Now, to your other point, I mean, if you want to really stare into the abyss. Oh, of course. Yeah. How fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the reality is that 
I mean, the dinosaurs didn't want to be dinosaurs. We're all, we're all becoming dinosaurs. <laughs> and that event, pretty cool being a you know, T-Rex or something back yeah. in them. Lake except Cacious. for the arms. Except for yeah. the arms. Yeah, like the big, giant teeth make up for it. You know what I mean? I it's, mean, that would pretty much spell an end to our guitar playing career if we were T-Rexes. Di- if we were T-Rexes. Guys, virtuoso guitar shredders. They just shredded <laughs> things with their teeth. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, yes, and the, they're massive movie stars, too. And, of course, AI is replacing all of us. So perhaps, so perhaps what will happen is, you know, the, so perhaps Fegan, whoever it is, it's catfishing, just as one example, eventually that person's going to be able to create like an AI, AI version, an AI version <laughs> and then they'll develop a relationship with the AI yeah. and then maybe totally drop off the grid. Well, I tell you, man, we talked about this before, once, those, once the, that happens and then the sex robots come online, it's going to be all we're going to just be creating our own like partners and then like, there we go. Oh, yeah, dude. Well, they've, and you that's know, the, the end of humanity. The door door's shut on humanity. Well, you know, the, 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 the people over at Real Doll who've already <laughs> been making... <laughs> They've already been making the, like, it's got a full endoskeleton. Please tell me they have, you don't have to cut the balls off before you violate. <laughs> well, I mean, you could custom order it if you wanted, like, a eunuch real doll. I'm sure they would oblige if you're willing to pay. I, think, I mean, like, these, these things, like, cost in, like, the tens of thousands what? of dollars. That's a real thing you're talking about. It's a real doll thing. It's so it's yeah, like, it's, it's like, like a, a sex it's doll like a that's made out of. Okay. Yeah. It, well, once yeah. they have the robot part of that, like, they're already working on it. And yeah, they watch can, some HBO documentaries, put, man. Oh, how fun. <laughs> like, watch this. Is, watch like, watch this real doll. Humanity is going to end. <laughs> yeah. Like once the AI gets, you, know, you can create your perfect partner and put it into the sex bot of your choice. <laughs> uh, dude, that's, that's what AI is. I know. Is, I know it's, it's going to happen. Yeah. It's, but that's freaking game over for humanity once that happens. It's Both totally ways, game. men and women. You know, like you, we'll never. Yep. Why would you have a relationship with another human? If you could, the only like, answer you know. is to invest in AI, everybody. <laughs> like you've got to do it because it's making us all like, like hey, the man. social. If I live long enough. If I want to live on that Elysium game. space station where everyone's fighting for scraps <laughs> on Earth, I need to start doing that. You know what I mean? It's like, so when the sex bots, you know, with like my harem of perfect fix sex bots you know um. so, so hopefully <laughs> so hopefully in the short term chapel roan and taylor swift can lead the way to more healthy fandom yeah i agree well also just, just us, for a little window us have to take our own little part in that too like everyone's got to have a healthy relationship with the media that they love and they have to treat with respect. that it and the other people who interface with that media have to be treated with respect and understanding yeah and those and people need to somehow ha- like i don't know people need to have lives filled with more person to person human interaction yeah. or just you know recognize that there's you know there's beauty in just sitting on the beach and watching the sunset with, with your friends and then going right. and having dinner that's that's just as good as you know i don't know dming whoever or you know what if you uh, are introverted like pick up a hobby it doesn't yeah. i mean taking yeah. guitar lessons from one of us is obviously the best it's thing the, to do the best choice you get right do. but if you're into other stuff pick up a you sport, know like maybe start you know uh, skating maybe pick up hockey or tennis or, yeah go you know, to the public park yeah. and learn how to make a basket or something yeah, exactly. you know you, you gotta Basketball. just go out there and like start hiking you know maybe like you know that go out yeah, and, and experience totally. you know surfing that's a great way if you live next to the ocean yeah, you, you might you know you know what you might meet Kirk Hammett when he's supposed to be working on a new guitar solo. Yeah, he'll be out there surfing instead. He'll show up and he'll just bust out all the solos in one day, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> They're all like, because no one cares about solos anyway, dude. Like, nobody cares. Just go out so. to wherever people surf in the Bay Area. Yeah. And then, well, he lives, you know, he surfs in Hawaii, though. He's not like surfing. Oh, in the Bay yeah. Area. I guess that's yeah. right. He's rich. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. So pick mm-hmm. up a hobby that requires bumping into another human being. Yeah. Which is almost any hobby. Really you know, in, instead of like catfishing Tegan and Sarah. Yeah, exactly. Or go pick up a hobby. Or whoever other artist you might think of. Or whoever. Yeah, or whoever yeah. else it is, right? Yeah. You know, or save the money on the VIP meet and greet. You know, just like and take spend all that on buying next age albums. Just go buy. Uh, yeah, X-Ages right. X-Ages totally, could, absolutely like, right. Take the meet and greet for the Luke Bryan concert and put that towards next age album purchases, yes. and then give it to all your friends, and then make them, you know, do a blood oath with you that they'll send in the ten of their Ooh, friends. Ooh, you know what? I've been listening kind of to. Uh, so since it's spooky season, I've been, uh, <laughs> I've been listening to uh, some more Huntress again. Oh yeah, right. Nice. Yeah, Along yeah. with like the usual menu of Merciful Fate, King Diamond. Uh, this year, Lucifer is on the listening uh, on sense. my playlist. Yeah. Right, so that's like my new addition. To to spooky season, but uh, yep. do the opening track on uh, Starbound Beast, Blood Sisters. Oh fuck, that's a great song. So I everybody Huntress, great kind of power metal band, sort of uh, dude, was so great mid two thousand two thousand ten ish two thousand twelve. Yeah, like twenty tens. Yeah. yeah, I think Jill Janis, Jill Janis committed Janis suicide vocalist, in yeah. like 2014, 2016. Yeah. I've heard it's good stuff. Definitely is. Yeah, for yeah. Sure. I wish she were still alive because yep, her voice was fucking. Oh, that band was awesome. That's one of those bands where I just listen to it and think, fuck, I wish I had thought of this. Yeah. 
that makes sense. You know, yeah. the other you do those, we just think of it and we put it on the next X Stages album, and that's how we deal with our thoughts. You know yes, I mean? that's exactly right. Creative so, outlets, by the way, are the good thing to do. Yes, time. creative yeah. outlets that yeah. don't involve catfishing or standing or somebody. manifestos about the nature of government <laughs> and things like that. Let's not do that. Yes, either. D- don't go. Yeah. yeah, don't Kaczynski it. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't go the Unibomb. I know. Path. I know that that cabin in the woods is very fetching, but you know, it's like. Yes. <laughs> just, I feel yeah. like. <laughs> don't do it, man. I you feel know. like this is the part of the podcast where we should have like the toll free phone number for like a non profit help group. That's but, true. So that would, there's that require us even, the, even the most modest amount of research, which we haven't done. So it's like. <laughs> no, but, but you know, in lieu of that, you could visit our website at www. ex. Oh, a what? G i s b a n d. Okay, let's try that again. Okay, I'm gonna let Scott do it this time. You could visit our website at www. ex a e g i s b a n d. Com. Nice. You did it without all the William Shatner. I don't do the pregnant pauses. pauses, but you also can find our social media links there. So please. Speaking of which, follow us on social media, but be respectful. Ah. Right, well, don't, <laughs> don't expect us to DM you. Uh, we, we will, you know, if it's quick and I say thumb up, that's all good. I'm cool with that. But just like, please don't, you know, don't have, have boundaries. Help us, help us all help each other. Boundaries. boundaries help people. us help you. <laughs> exactly. And then go buy as many X Ages albums as you possibly can. That's please right. Please make sure to like, rate, and subscribe to this podcast, and we will see you next week. Peace.